So I'd like to welcome our first speaker. Our first speaker is Kate Starbird. She's a professor at the University of Washington, and she's going to talk to us about the idea of a COVID-19 infodemic as well as an epidemic or pandemic. Um, Kate, uh, you're welcome to uh, share your screen now with us and start. All right, I am actually not gonna use slides this, this time around. Um, my talk today is a reflection on COVID-19 from the perspective of a researcher of crisis informatics. Um, for over a decade, my colleagues and I have been studying how people converge online during crisis events. Uh, our field is informed by much older research in fields of sociology of disaster and the psychology of rumor. And many of our lessons are relevant to COVID-19. I'm gonna start with what we know about human responses to crises generally. So crisis, crisis events as they unfold are often characterized by high uncertainty about what's happening and what we should do about it, both individually and collectively. In these cases, the facts of the situation are often dynamic and they're often unknowns or things that, that need to be resolved. This uncertainty feeds anxiety about the personal and collective impacts of the event as well about what actions, actions we should take. What should we do? Where should we go? When should we evacuate or in this case, quarantine? Under these conditions, people come together to seek, process, and share information, to try to resolve that uncertainty and anxiety. It's a part of the human response to disaster events. Researchers call this process collective sense-making, and it's been theorized to serve both psychological as well as informational needs. Though a natural response to crisis events, sense-making can produce rumors, including ones that turn out to be true and ones that turn out to be false. And as we know, false rumors or misinformation are dangerous because they can cause people to take actions that endanger themselves or others. Historically, the biggest challenge for people experiencing a crisis event was an absence of official or good information. Uh, and in that void, people would share information with their families, friends, and neighbors to try to make the best decisions. In the connected era, the problem isn't necessarily a lack, a, a lack of information, but the overabundance of information and the challenge of differentiating between information we should trust and information that we shouldn't trust. And unfortunately, our current information space is characterized by the pervasive spread of mis- and disinformation and the active politicization of just about everything. Um, the conditions of crisis make us particularly vulnerable to these types of messages. So with COVID-19, we have a perfect storm of sorts. The event itself is highly uncertain with the best knowledge and the underlying science changing from day to day as we learn more. And the uncertainty is very slow to resolve as the event continues to affect people all over the world. As a result, we're all experiencing this extended period of anxiety where we're trying to resolve it by searching and searching and searching for more information. And we're doing that in an era where our information systems are already inundated with rumor, misinformation, and disinformation. And so within this sort of perfect storm, what kinds of actions should we take? What should we do? And I mean we in a lot of different ways. So when I think about we as information participants, I would recommend that we tune in to how our anxiety fuels the sort of information seeking and sharing practices that may make us susceptible to spreading misinformation. Perhaps this is the hand washing for the infodemic part of the pandemic and the things that we can, the action that we could take to maybe help that, that and, and make it better. For crisis communicators, an acute issue is that the challenge of finding information we can trust as, in, as information participants becomes compound, compounded when we lose trust in official sources or the government agencies charged with managing the response. For those agencies right now, I really recommend that they be truthful, building their policies and recommendations using the best science available at the time, communicating the scientific uncertainty in ways that their audiences can understand, and being honest about their rationale for specific recommendations. And I, and I know that this is gonna be acute when we talk about masks coming up in the next few weeks. Otherwise, these agencies risk losing trust at a time when it's most critical for people to be able to find and act on trusted information. For political leaders and communicators, I recommend that they reflect on how their statements contribute to the spread of misinformation and may have detrimental effects on individual and collective responses. When elected leaders and political appointees share dubious information and contradict their own agencies and scientists, this foments distrust and diminishes our ability to find the information we need, inc increasing the anxiety and uncertainty, and even causing people to take actions that endanger themselves and others. On the technology side, I'm supportive of many of the actions taken by social media platforms preventing, for preventing the spread of misinformation. I want us to consider how these changes um, may 
we we may need to revisit these as the event on, on, as the event kind of calms down because we're making some some pretty extreme changes. In particular, I commend the platforms for for applying new policies not just to everyday people but to influencers, including high profile media pundits and even elected leaders. We've seen them take actions um, that for the first time against political leaders in terms of removing their content. I think that's a good thing. However, I caution against the sort of fine-grained policing of content that might inadvertently silence the collective sense-making process that is so vital for people coping with the impacts of the, uh, the pandemic. So I really encourage the platforms to continue to sort of focus on influence and how the dynamics of their platforms help misinformation and disinformation go viral rather than focusing on the sense makers or the people that are just trying to cope with this event and may sometimes get it wrong, but that's actually an important part of our response to the um, to the to, to this kind of disaster events. And so um, I'm actually I, I spoke too fast, so I, I think I'm going to end early. But hopefully, we'll have some time for questions later. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Kate.